So hi everybody and welcome to this uh, AVID webinar stream on with AVID News. Thanks a lot for taking the time to join us. Uh, my name is uh, Craig Wilson. I'm the product evangelist for uh, video and media here at AVID. Uh, and with me today on the webinar is going to be my colleague, Regis Andre, who's our senior director of product management. So what are we going to be looking at today? So the first thing we're going to look at is give you an overview of AVID's new solutions and specifically AVID's new solutions in a cloud. And also we'll look at a hybrid um, environment. We'll look at some of the workflows that, uh, that are possible, some of the ways that this kind of technology is enabling uh, teams uh, to collaborate really regardless um, of their location. Uh, we are going to have a live demo um, as part of this, focusing on the role of Media Central Cloud UX and how uh, it really brings all of the different team members together to allow people to create content, to ingest media, to share media, uh, and then of course to publish uh, and distribute it to really any platform, whether it's broadcast, um, social media, um, online websites, really, really anywhere. You know the chaos of breaking news, the stress of coordinating multiple teams to cover a developing yet rapidly changing story, the fierce competition to be first with the facts, on air, online, and on social media. What if you had a solution that simplified all of this, enabling teams to connect and collaborate on stories from anywhere? A solution that makes it easy to plan, ingest, create, share, and publish content, whether you're on the scene, in the newsroom, or somewhere in between. With Avid's news solutions, you can do all of this and more. This powerful yet simple to use solution streamlines your entire workflow from content planning and creation to distribution. So you can focus on simply telling your story and you can include other team members in your plans from any part of your creative community to truly unify your teams around the story. Plan your coverage, delegate tasks, and enable all team members to sync up together in one place wherever they are. Share media instantly with editors and graphic designers as new footage comes in for fast turnarounds. Find the media you need in seconds, including related and historical footage. Write scripts and prepare your story for presentation. Track new developments with integrated tools. Monitor social media and news wires. Add graphics and publish your story to all of your platforms. Minimize the chaos maximize your coverage and harness the power of the cloud. Take your newsroom to the next level with integrated news solutions and experience seamless collaborative media production on premises and in the cloud. For more information, visit avid.com forward slash news. Great. So hopefully that gives you a you know flavor of just some of the workflows that of course Avid's news solutions um support, you know, all the way from you know ingest through to distribution, very much with creativity and collaboration and um, very much at the heart of it. So really what we're going to look at now for the next little while is discussing a bit more about news and media production um, in the cloud. Um, and so to do that, uh, I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Regis, uh, and Regis and, uh, and I are going to walk you through uh, the next little bit. So uh, Regis, it's uh, over to you. Hey, thanks, Craig. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us during this uh, webinar here. We are very happy for you to take the time uh, and we deeply are so what we're going to look at here is uh, basically how Avid has been uh, approaching the moving the media production into the cloud. Uh, as you probably know, this is a journey. Uh, and, you know, it's not very easy to do and to uh, realistic to just want to just take everything and just put it in the cloud and hope everything will work in a very nice uh, fashion. At Avid, we decided to deliver it in a way that ensures that our customers uh, have a secure, redundant, and scalable solution. So what we did is in phase one, uh, we did a simple lift and shift. This allowed us to learn what works, what does not work or perform well in a full cloud environment. And we took these lessons to create phase two and phase three. Phase two is being finalized as we speak right now. Uh, it's very exciting time here because we are leveraging cloud native Kubernetes to enable better redundancy and scalability for the media central core engine and the playback stack. Then we'll move on to phase three that will see the Windows based components such as our production uh, management system being deployed as Dockers and leveraging hosted database instead of virtual machines, for instance. So those three phases are extremely important for us to, to be 
go to a full cloud native solution. What you're going to see on this slide is a diagram of the supported solution in phase one. We have several customers already leveraging this in production today. Taking media production, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, so one thing you want to notice is that at the heart of the solution, it is a Nexus fast system running on Azure storage, preserving the workflow and capabilities that you are so used to, but in a cloud. The workflow is a simpler production workflow. It enables stream and file ingest, full production using Media Central and Media Composer, as well as file distribution by exports or publication through Media Central Publisher. As you can notice by the big red cross, there are no connection in the system to on-prem systems. So this is very much an island production system in the cloud. Craig? Yeah, thanks a lot, Rajiv. So, you know, what kind of workflows um, is this really enabling? And what are some of the use cases, you know, that, that, that could be done with a system like this, um, this in the cloud? So there's this in the cloud. So there's three different use cases really that we're highlighting um, here, show production, highlights production and online news production. So, of course, getting media, uh, you know, into the cloud is something that, of course, was seen as a, as a barrier in the past. But with the development that uh, we have at Avid of what's called Media Central Stream, um, we're able to take streams and put them you know, directly into a cloud hosted environment. So this is coming from, for example, SRT or RTMP sources or coming you know, from like the live view um, as well and have them directly into the Media Central production system. When media comes in, it's in the house codec, it's ready to, to, to use. So it's able to then be used by the production team. There's really no change in their downstream workflow, if you like. Uh, and of course, when it comes to publication, we can publish using Media Central Publisher to social media sites or to um, online um, uh, sites, web CMS systems, for example, as well. So these are just some examples of the kind of workflows that um, you know, are currently available um, for, for people to, to use using what we have with a system that is um, fully hosted and in the cloud itself. But of course, this is just phase one, and as Regis mentioned, there are other phases. So to talk a little bit more about the next phase, uh, again, I'll hand back to Regis. So Regis, it's back over to you. Thank you, Craig. So when you look at the second diagram here, you can see that now we are introducing the connectivity between uh, sites in the cloud and sites uh, on-prem. So in phase two, we are introducing major changes, such as running Media Central, not anymore on the Linux virtual machine, but on hosted Kubernetes deployment in the cloud. This will give us better scalability, performances, and of course, availability. We're also launching with phase two hybrid workflows, and that's what this big green arrow is representing in this diagram. It's um, hybrid workflows where content can be securely transferred over the internet, public or private, between the cloud and on-prem system. So there is, for instance, a need to send an SDI server on production. So you have an SDI server on-prem and you want to do a send to playback from your cloud solution to your on-prem video server. Today, it would be technically very hard to achieve, but with this new transfer stack that we are engineering, now you can do send to playback from the cloud over the classic internet to a video server that is on-prem. No need to have a dedicated line, no need to be worried about latency and things like this. The transfers will be secured and will happen uh, uh, in time. Uh, same thing, if you wanted to replicate content from an on-prem system to a cloud system for disaster recovery, for instance, using Media Central Sync, no worries. The same green arrow is going to enable those transfers. So this time in an over direction, not from the cloud to the on-prem, but from the on-prem to the cloud uh, in a very secure and again, a very tolerant fashion uh, regarding network topologies and things like this. Craig? Yeah, so thanks, Raji. So, you know, building on those use cases that, that of course, we had um, in, in phase one, you know, what are some of the other um, use cases here? Well, I mean, the key one I think we're discussing in terms of this webinar is the fact that you'd now be able to do what we class as a full use operation in the cloud. So, you know, your creative uh, workflows in the cloud, but obviously connecting back to any on-prem, um, say, studio facilities and things like that um, as well. Um, of course, you know, fast turnaround productions become, you know, much easier to, to do as well, still using that studio infrastructure as well. And really, as Rajis mentioned there at the end, also the possibility of having, you know, disaster recovery systems um, running um, in the cloud um, as well. So really building on what, um, you know, we, we support at the moment and adding these additional use cases. And of course, these are only a selection. There are many other, you know, use cases cases um, as well that, uh, that could be used as part of, uh, of part of what we're doing. So that's hopefully given you an overview of 
you know, some of the kinds of things that, uh, that we can do. What we're going to do now is we're going to move into, you know, a live demo. And I'm actually going to connect to a system um, and begin to show you, you know, some of the things which are, are already possible um, today. So I'm going to bring up um, Media Central Cloud UX. So Media Central Cloud UX is a, a web-based tool um, from Avid. If you haven't seen it before, it runs on, on Google Chrome, and that's what's running on my, my local machine um, here. And really, Media Central Cloud UX is about providing a whole range of different capabilities that are very kind of workflow related. So for example, if I'm working as a journalist or a producer or a researcher or an archivist or an ingest operator, I can use Media Central Cloud UX. It's very much about having those kind of efficient workflows. Um, and it's worth pointing out that everything I'm doing today, I'm actually going to be doing using a, a system that's actually running in the cloud. So I'm based in the UK. Um, I live in Scotland, um, but I'm actually connecting to a system that's running in the Microsoft um, Azure cloud um, in a data center somewhere in Europe. I don't really care. I have a secure connection to it, and I'm able to go in and to work and to do everything that I that I need to do. And going back to the, really the heart of everything, it is about collaboration. So what are we looking at here? So in Media Central Cloud UX, we have along the top, um, a series of what we call apps. And these are apps that enable different types of workflow depending on, on what you're doing. The first app we're looking at here is what's called Media Central Collaborate. Now, Media Central Collaborate is about planning, tracking, um, story assignment, uh, for example, sharing content, and really helping teams work together regardless of, of where they are. And you can see here, you know, I'm looking at my plan for the week. I can see all the various different um, assignments that have been created where you can go in and you can then task users to actually you know, do specific tasks. And we'll come back to this um, in a little while. But in terms of some of the other apps that we have, um, for example, we have the Browse app. So the Browse app allows me to connect to and browse through any of the different systems that I'm working with. So for example, here, I'm looking at my Media Central production system, but I also have access to my Media Central newsroom management system. I also have interest to access to my archive, to my Maestro graphics, but I also have access to these systems, which you'll see have a little down arrow on them. And these are remote systems because one of the great workflows that we have at Avid is multi-site. So we can connect multiple systems together and you can work with them together as if it was one big system and you can then transfer material uh, around uh, if you need to, to do that. So that's the Browse app. We then have search and the search app allows me to search against any or all of our systems. And that can include doing things like phonetic searching, where I can actually search on the audio um, in uh, interview clips, for example. We have some patented technology that, uh, that we use um, for that. We talked a little bit at the start about getting material into the cloud. So of course we have a file ingest app. And so this would allow me to get files from my local machine um, into the system as well. So while it's worth mentioning that you know, while I'm talking here about you know, this is being capable in a, in a cloud-hosted system, of course, everything that I'm going to show you would be available today in an on-prem system um, as well. So it's important to recognize that you know, what I'm showing you here are things that we can do today, either on-prem or we can do them um, in the cloud um, as well. We also have um, Media Central Publisher, a Media Central publisher is about, you know, taking content and publishing this content to um, social media sites, for example, adding branding. If you want to do square video, 9 by 16 video, you know, we can do um, all of that as well. And of course, we also have access to a rundown. So we have Media Central Newsroom Management, it used to be called iNews in the past. Um, and this then allows me, of course, to then go in and, for example, access any stories that I have in my rundown and write and work there as well. Now, one app that we wanted to talk a little bit more about because you know, it's still fairly new is called Media Central Acquire. Uh, and Media Central Acquire is a, a controller app to control ingest devices. So it can actually control um, Media Central Stream. Now, Media Central Stream is a, a virtual device that um, can bring in uh, IP streams, compressed IP streams from, uh, from sources such as SRT or RTMP or LiveView, for example convert them into your house codec and then make that media available to you know, any of your staff. And so you can see here, um, I'm actually controlling just one uh, media central stream here, but I could be controlling multiple 
um, stream devices. I can also control file serve ingest as well. So file serve ingest, file serve IO for SDI um, based sources. So you can actually see I have a recording that's ongoing here at the moment, but I also want to go in and I want to um, create a recording uh, and, to, uh, and to show you that um, uh, as well. So one thing to mention is I can also preview the streams, you know, before they're coming into me. So here, for example, I can see what's coming in on channel one, channel two, and also channel four here as well. Um, so I'm going to do a story uh, about a volcano. OK, so I've got some volcano shots coming in just now. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, just create a recording um, to allow me to, to do that. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to give it a name. Call it volcano recording. Uh, let's maybe do it for uh, 10 minutes. And I'm just going to do a crash recording here. Now, you see at the bottom, there's a variety of settings that I can have for different templates in terms of the channels I'm using, obviously the sources that I have, whether I want to use spare channels, you know, have a kind of backup channel as well. But I'm just going to say to, you know, go into record now, and I'll just pop that one into record. So what you see on the channel is it goes into a queued state, uh, and then it goes into, you know, a recording state, and then the media um, is beginning at this point uh, to then come into my um, media central um, system uh, system itself. So one of the things with this is if I just, you know, select the recording itself, I can also bring up, for example, this recording info panel. So this then shows me more information about the recording. It's actually ongoing. You know, it's giving me a percentage status, for example. I can, of course, if I wanted to go back in um, and update the metadata, I could change any of the metadata, you know, while the recording is going on. But as you can see here with this, um, you know, white um, um, a recording that's planned is I can also use Media Central Acquire to plan future recordings. So I could do scheduled recordings that are one offs. I could do recordings that um, happen over a certain period of time. So, you know, say, for example, we have an event that happens at the same time every week and I want to go off and to, to plan a recording that will happen automatically. Then, you know, I can do uh, I can do all of that as well. But what if I'm working as the ingest operator? And so here we've looked at, you know, I can see a preview of the stream that's coming in. So I can make sure it's the right, you know, um, signal that's coming into me. What if I actually want to look at this? So all I need to do here is just double click actually on the, the recording um, in the panel. Um, and what will happen is I'm able to go in and to then access and view that here inside of Media Central Cloud UX, because of course we have an integrated media player. So I can easily come in and I can begin to view the video that's coming in um, as well. Now, I appreciate over, over you know, Zoom, it may look like the playback's a little bit choppy, but the playback here you know, is, um, is very, very secure. So in Media Central Cloud UX, you, know, you can configure the window. So for example, here I could monitor all the audio channels and I can see everything that's, that's coming in um, as well. And also really importantly, I could also then, you know, make this media available to anybody else that's working um, on the system um, as well. And one of the really easy ways to do that is to actually do you to, to use um, Media Central Collaborate um, to do this. So I can actually see up here that I actually have some tasks, for example, um, and a new assignment on this volcano. So I'm just going to go to that. So just by selecting the um, assignment here, I can actually see a bunch of tasks. Now, if this was happening live, I would be receiving notifications. That's what this little bell is for, to, to show me these things. So for example, here, I've got one to monitor ingest feed. So I can say, okay, this is now in progress. So what this means, of course, is that everybody else who is uh, working on this knows that this is happening. This area in the middle here is what we call the container. And this is where I can actually gather content together for anybody that's working on this story. Because of course, with something like a volcano eruption, perhaps I want to create content for social media. Perhaps I want to create something that's for a broadcast show. So, you know, everybody who's working on the story could have access to the same content. And the way that I can do that is simply by dragging and dropping it directly into the container itself and that then makes it available for anybody else who's working on the story. Now, I'm not creating any new media when I'm doing this. I'm simply adding a link, you know, to this item um, as it's coming in. So, you know, very, very quickly after the, the, uh, the ingest begins, I can actually go in and I can begin to, to do some work on this as well. Now, you can also see here there is another task 
which is to do some research on volcanoes. Now, this blue um, bar here indicates to me that this is actually something that's ongoing, and I can see that actually Regis um, has also been tasked with this as well. So we also have the capability in Media Central Collaborate to create and work on what are called notes. And so this is a note uh, that, um, that I've created here, but you know, I'm gonna hold up my fingers here because I'm not typing anything. And that's because I can see that also Regis is in this note as well, because this is a, a collaborative space where multiple people can work together to you know, create content, to share information. You could perhaps write uh, your script here, put together any information that you want to do. And Regis and I are working together. Now, Regis is not sitting in my house somewhere. You know, Regis is working from home and Regis is in France. You know, so I'm, you know, here in Scotland, Regis is in France, but we're able to collaborate together and we could have more people um, working in here as well. You know, we could, we could have colleagues in, in any location who are able to access the system uh, actually coming together um, and writing and, and sharing content here as well. So notes are a really important area, a collaborative space that we have um, in here. But if I go back to my tasks again, I can see I've been tasked to write and edit a sequence for the 10 p.m. show. So I'm going to start doing that now. So I'm going to mark that as in progress. And, and I can also see here as well as the note, I also have this. Now, this is actually a story in my Media Central newsroom system. So the person that's planning this has popped this placeholder in here for me. Um, and if I uh, double click on that, it then takes me directly to my Media Central newsroom management rundown and it picks up um, the story for me. So what we're looking at here at the top is the list of all the stories on the show, but it's specifically selected that one because that's the one I'm working on. So I'm just going to hide um, the list of stories here and I can now go ahead and I can begin to work, you know, actually on my story itself. So, you know, one of the quick things you can do inside of, you know, Media Central Newsroom Management, you can use what are called um, script templates. So, for example, here I want to add in a production, a production instruction that, um, you know, this at this point, the presenter is going to be speaking on camera. I don't need to type that. I can just use some shortcuts uh, to do that. But then, of course, I could come in and I could write, you know, my story. Now, of course, you know, while I'm doing this, other people could be working on the volcano story to, to create that content to be published out to social media. Other people could be working on the titles, the teasers, the end headlines, all of these things that are related to it because we're all working with the same core media. And that's all underpinned by our Nexus storage. Now, in a cloud environment, we have the Nexus virtual file system that's running um, on um, Azure storage. And it's really important to understand that, you know, Avid has its own storage platform. You know, Nexus storage is used in the most demanding of media production environments. Um, and it's storage from Avid. So it's perfectly tuned to obviously working uh, in a media central environment um, as well. And it's important to understand that even when we're running in the cloud, it is that Nexus virtual file system that's actually enabling you know, a lot of the different workflows to, uh, to take place. Now, as well as writing the story, I can, of course, um, create and edit a sequence. Um, so, you know, as I'm doing that, you can see here, I've had a pop-up that's, uh, that's come in telling me that, um, you know, I have a new task. So, you know, as we're working here, I can see that new tasks have come in. And if I select this, it would take me directly to that particular point in time. And it's important also to mention that notifications like this come available on mobile. There is a mobile app for Media Central Collaborate. They're also available inside Media Composer. They're also available inside of um, Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Photoshop and also Adobe After Effects as well. So, you know, we talk about, you know, Avid being at the heart of collaboration. Really, this is what it's about. You can bring together team members from really any part of your operation um, within the system to allow them and to enable them to collaborate and to work all together. So I'm just going to, you know, create a couple of shots um, in here. It's a single video monitor. Uh, so I'm just going to switch across now to my rushes. So this is my feed still coming in. Uh, I can tell it's still coming in. There's a sort of green pulsing line that's happening here. It's quite a nice shot of the, the mountain. So let me just go and mark a couple of shots from here and just pop that on the timeline. I can, of course, trim in the timeline. 
and just to make things longer and shorter. And if I actually scroll through to the end, you see that this is captured in progress. You know, this is still a feed that's uh, that's coming in. But of course, you know, I'm able to work with it absolutely and uh, no problem. I'm going to go back and choose you know, a little bit something else and just mark it in out here and then just pop that in the timeline as well. So obviously now I can review the sequence that I've got, but perhaps I want to make this sequence available to someone else. You know, perhaps someone else wants to take this. Um, perhaps someone using Media Composer, you know, wants to take this uh, as a rough cut and then finish and finish that off. And so to do that, you know, it's really, really simple because again, as I mentioned, Media Central Collaborate is available inside Composer. It's also available inside of, you know, the, um, uh, the Adobe tools, as I mentioned. All I need to do is simply drag and drop that across and that's going to add this in as well. And again, it's just a link that it's added in here. But this would mean, you know, anybody else who's working on the story can now go and see, obviously, what's happening. Now, if I've finished my editing, of course, the thing we want to do is to then publish this. So, of course, from here, I can do what's called send to playback. So I could send this, for example, to Media Central Stream. Because Media Central Stream, as well as being available for ingest, is also available for playout as well. So we can play out, for example, SRT streams to you know, any destination. Um, and for the hybrid workflow in the future, sending to, uh, for example, a, a video server that's sitting in an on-prem um, environment. But of course, the other kind of things I could do is if I wanted to, I could also save this as you know, a different version and save this as a different version because perhaps I want to take this, make some changes to it, but I don't want to change the original. Um, and then from there, perhaps take that content uh, and then distribute that out through social media. So again, from here, because I have access to Media Central Publisher, I could then take anything that I've done here um, and then publish it out. And that includes sequences, for example, that are created um, uh, in Media Composer. So a sequence that's in Media Composer could easily be shared with me here, uh, and I could then publish it. And again, the key point of this is I could be doing this from anywhere. Okay, it doesn't matter. I don't need to be in the office to do this. I just need to be somewhere. Of course, I need to have an internet connection. It is proxy that's being streamed to me here. So I'm not requiring, you know, a really heavy internet connection to allow me to do all of this work. There's a proxy that's streaming to me here and it allows me to work from home, connecting to a system in Azure. And as we mentioned earlier on, you know, Regis and I working together, you know, even when Regis um, is across um, in France. So in terms of the demo, I appreciate that's just a quick run through you know, of a lot of different things, but hopefully it just illustrates you know, some of the capabilities that we have today on premise, everything I've shown you today available um, on premise and also you know, coming to um, cloud and uh, hybrid um, workflows um, as well. So with that, I'm going to go back to my presentation just for a, just for a second. Um, before we then come on to the, the, the Q&A. So just to summarize really what we're talking about here, it really is about efficiency and about collaboration. You know, if you take some things away from it, you know, that really is, um, is, is what this is uh, all about. Um, it's about, you know, working together regardless of location. It is about mobile workflows. I talked about the mobile app that, uh, that we have available as well. It is also about working from anywhere with web-based tools. You know, Media Central Cloud UX has, you know, lots and lots of great um, capabilities. So with that, we're now going to switch across to the, the Q&A. And thanks uh, to the people who've been sending um, some questions in um, already. And so, um, Regis, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. If you put your camera back on, again, we can we can have a chat. So, um, Regis, um, Hopefully that you know illustrates you know just some of the capabilities that um, that, that we have. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask about is I mentioned there about mobile um, workflows um, and the mobile app for Media Central Collaborate being being available. So where, mobile, where does mobile kind of play its part in how we are delivering solutions and what are customers saying um, about these kind of solutions to us? Um, mobile is very important and it's becoming more and more important, of course, to a lot of our customers. Uh, as you said, and as you showed in the screenshot, we have a Collaborate mobile app, and this application is here to help you stay connected back to home base, where you can receive your notification when you're assigned to task. You can play the media from the server as well, from, from, from the Nexus storage, directly on your cell phone. So if you want to review footage or even a sequence, you can do that directly from your mobile phone. Uh, but we heard that the customers want to do more. They also want to be able to not only just consume things that are coming from the station, but they want to be able to push content. 
push media and participate in a way that they cannot do today very efficiently and very easily. What we, we've been hearing is that they want to be able to do things way, way more, much, much more faster than we, they can today. So I'm a journalist or on site, I'm shooting something with my cell phone. I need to be able to upload this content very easily to my system. I need to be able to assign or attach this into container to my story that I'm working on. And all of these things needs to be done automatically, maybe down the line leveraging AI to do some automated things around that footage. So this is what we're hearing from customers. And this, this is exactly what we're focusing on our efforts right now around mobile development. Uh, enabling really this very tight connection and try to make it as seamless, as effortless, and as fast as possible. Yeah. So, so thanks again to you know people who are sending questions in. So there's a question from Bruno uh, who sent in. So Bruno, thanks a lot for the for the question. Um, where he's asking about elaborating about flexible storage. Um, he's saying you know avid existing customers might be interested to know uh, of different types of storage that perhaps um, are associated. And also asking about um, I think there was a an acronym in one of the um, slide FSIO that stands for fast serve IO. That's what um, what that related to to Bruno. Um, so. I mean, I think I'll maybe say some things, Regis, and maybe then hand over to you. I mean, fundamentally, Avid Nexus is the storage that we that we use for our you know, media central system. So, you know, media central systems have um, Avid Avid Nexus storage, uh, and we very much see that as uh, an advantage um, for us. The fact that we have our own um, integrated um, storage, uh, as opposed to um, having to integrate, for example, with you know third party um, storage companies. So, we do see it as a as a big advantage. I think in terms of flexible storage, when it comes to the cloud, then really that's the virtual file system from Nexus that is um, really providing all of the, the kind of capabilities um, that exist there. But it is running on Azure storage. You know, it is running on, on the storage there. And that's one of the key differences, of course, from ISIS storage that we had in the past um, and Nexus is that, you know, the file system itself is abstracted if you like, from the actual story, it's storage itself. So it gives us that capability uh, of actually, for example, you know, running now the the, the Nexus file system um, in the in the Azure cloud um, as well. So fundamentally, it is still you know Avid Nexus um, storage, um, and we do see that um, as an advantage. Regis, I don't know if you want to say anything else more around the the cloud based storage, for example. Yeah, no, but I think what's great is by porting the Nexus file system to the cloud, what we're enabling you to do is to just leverage all the capabilities that you love with Nexus, which is the ability to do workspace management, uh, dynamic resizable workspaces, uh, user permission, access control, all those kind of things really that are not available by default into different cloud storage. So the Nexus file system later really had all those capabilities on top of extended cloud storage. Plus, you're also gaining uh, the advantages of all the bandwidth uh, management and capabilities that Nexus offers, which lets uh, some of our customers do a very large production actually running directly of that storage. Obviously, what we're looking to provide is a sort of pathway for customers you know, to use and obviously to do that in a secure way. So I know security is a really key aspect of everything that we do um, at Avid uh, around Media Central as well. So I just wonder if you want to talk a little bit about the kind of security work that we're doing and how important that is for customers. Oh, we could do an entire webinar on yeah, we security. <laughs> it, it is definitely a uh, fascinating but very, very complex subject. There are different levels of security, of course, uh, and we just talked about one, security of the data over wire, uh, you know, uh, especially when you're going over the public internet. So there is encryptions uh, that are going on. There are also encryption of files, but there the security goes uh, all the way through the entire stack. It's not just what's happening when I'm moving content. It's also what's happening in the code of the application itself. So for the last few years, we've been really following a, a new protocol, you know, development practices that bleeds into as early as the design phase of what we are doing, where we are doing security assessment as soon as a feature request or a design of a feature is done by one of the product owners that have it. There is a dedicated security person that goes and look at the requirement and try to see, okay, are those requirements create security issues in the future? And we're wrapping this process throughout the entire production of the code and the software. And of course, until delivery and deployment of our customers. And what's interesting as well is on-prem deployments and cloud deployments have different security uh, issues as well that we need to address. So we are really looking at this uh, uh, extremely seriously. We have dedicated people for that. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we insist very often that our customers upgrade 
because um, uh, in order to always stay current, like with your antivirus or in web browser, you need to upgrade. That's very much true as well for software. We need to upgrade uh, libraries that we are using, whether it's Java or database systems such as Mongo or ORS. And um, that's very important. And uh, yes, it's, uh, it's uh, something that we're spending a lot of time on. And I think as well, it's also worth mentioning that you know we very much see security as it's a shared responsibility. You know, it's a shared responsibility with the customers, and it's a very close relationship. You know, for us to you know to work uh, work together and with them um, as well. Uh, so, Regis, there are no other open questions at the moment. Thank you very much for everyone who sent the questions. Um, sent the questions um, in. Oh, in fact, there's a question that's just oh. come in. Um, as we were uh, looking at there. Um, so there's a question from Liam, who's talking about the cloud DR for, for news, um, who's asking, is the Media Central database dupli duplicated um, in the cloud in, in real time? So if you want to talk, do you want me to talk a little bit about Sync or do you want to talk about Sync? I, I'm happy to do it, uh, you know, because uh, you've been talking a lot. So I, I'll leave, leave it to you then, Regis. I'm going to be good to you. Uh, no, but Media Central Sync is, uh, is an add-on to Media Central. Basically what it does is expose um, the production database uh, structure and you can go and select the folders you want to uh, copy. And uh, basically you're creating rules. You say, okay, those projects, I want to synchronize them to a cloud system for disaster recovery. And uh, those rules can be really up to you, Liam. Uh, you can decide that you want to do a backup every night or you want to do it every week. But you can also ask for that backup to be done in real time. So as soon as a new asset is created, uh, we will start transferring the media on, from Nexus to Nexus. But we also copy, of course, the, 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 the folder, the database structure from the project management A to the, to the B side, if you want. So you have exactly the same folder structure, all the metadata, metadata are carrying around. And then you have rules that I can also uh, des describe what's happening if you're deleting the media on the source system and the project, do you want to delete also on the, on the backup system or not? So there are a lot of uh, capabilities in Media Central Sync, uh, in, uh, in Media Central Sync. Yeah, no, that's great, Regis. Worth mentioning as well that Media Central Sync, of course, um, also possible on-prem and also possible now on WAN um, systems as well. So it's not something that you have to have um, a cloud-enabled um, you know, system to, to do. If you have a network of systems in the same building, for example, you could, of course, use Media Central you know, Sync to, uh, to, to do that as well. Great. So another question from, from Bruno. Um, any third-party integrations that we uh, perhaps want to highlight today um, about digital production? I mean, I think you know, one of the key things there is, of course, Media Central Publisher, because Media Central Publisher, um, as part of Media Central Cloud UX, really is enabling, you know, all of that kind of digital distribution work. I'll mention one other thing before we then hand across to, to Regis, is that one thing I didn't cover in the, in the demonstration is we also have tools for, you know, social media monitoring and aggregation as well. Um, one of the apps that we actually have inside of Media Central Cloud UX um, is from one of our partners called XNews. Uh, and so X News allows people to then monitor uh, across individual social media channels or multiple social media channels um, as well. And to do that, you know, in an integrated way, you can drag and drop content um, uh, into an ID story, for example, or you can do um, video transfer of transferring media from video sources from X News um, into a Media Central um, system as well. So, Rajesh, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add on, uh, particularly on the digital side around uh, what we can do with Media Central Publisher. I mean, with publisher, I mean, I think you, you said it all. I, I was rereading the question from Bruno around third party for digital production distribution world. Obviously, um, because we're also are working on the, with uh, Media Central Stream, as you saw maybe on the diagram, there was this tiny little box uh, for stream ingest. We're also capable uh, with Media Central Stream to do play out uh, with uh, SRT and NDI coming out soon as well. So we can also leverage this for playing out directly from the cloud SRT stream to third party system using a different third party uh, routing uh, software to, to direct that material wherever you need. So there's a lot of different solution between Media Central Publisher, which is more like taking a file and then publishing it uh, to different uh, output. It could be publishing it to, uh, to another asset management system on-prem. It could be uh, publishing it to a CMS, publishing it to, uh, to a social, of course, and all those things. But then Media Central Stream is going to enable you really to live stream your your, your your newscast. So if you're really running a show entirely in the cloud with all your ingest and production in the cloud with uh, Media Central Stream and, and Media Central Command, you can run your news playlist driven by the iNews rundown directly in the cloud and play out directly from Media Central uh, Stream your newscast. So that's um, pretty neat. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a great, great point to make. Um, so, Regis, we, we looked in the demo of, um, you know, using Media Central um, Acquire to control Media Central Stream, you know, to bring media in. And we talked about, you know, accessing mm -hmm. media. You know, one of the challenges, I guess, is around, you know, that some people have seen is about baseband video uh, and getting baseband video into the kind of system as well. So I don't know if there's anything you want to talk a little bit about how we're enabling that. Yes, of course, Craig. Uh... I fancy for a second to just say no, just to see your face. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, with um, with uh, Media Central, the Acquire app, as you can see, we can schedule recording, we can do crash record for Media Central uh, stream, which is basically a virtual video server running in the cloud, where you can do a compressed video stream ingest, such as SRT, for instance, as I mentioned before. But the same control application can control on-prem FSIO, faster, uh, IO servers or FS ingest, fast server ingest servers on prem. And in that case, we are using our new transform stack, as I explained a little bit earlier, that enable, enable us to cross these hybrid workflows between I'm having an on prem system, I'm still living in the basement world, and I need to connect my production system in the cloud. So as you, we've acquired, you start recording, uh, triggering a record on, on fast server ingest then the, our transform system will stream that content to the cloud production system so you can do your production and manage your entire workflow in the cloud. And that's the same way on your way out. When you do send to playback, you can send to playback, of course, to your cloud media central stream server, but you can also do a send to playback to a non-prem uh, FSIO or a faster payout box to do a basically playback from the on-prem system in USDI or you know, SMT video and things like this. Sure. So we're a couple more questions um, coming in. So there's a question from Julia, um, which I'll take, which talks about what kind of bandwidth is required for home users uh, to work smoothly and quickly without any issues. So um, on Media Central Cloud UX, as I mentioned, um, it is a proxy that's being streamed out to me. So for Media Central Cloud UX, which is the web-based um, you know, tool that we were looking at, you're really looking at about you know, five megabits uh, per second and, and up as a connection. I think I've got about 20 to 25 um, here in the uh, in the house, it you know works absolutely no no problem. I am hoping to get fiber broadband in in soon, but that's uh, where I am um, as of um, as of today. Um, I mentioned also that you know we have Media Composer that we can run in the cloud as well, connecting um, you know to that using some PC over IP technology. For it, you are looking at about twenty five megabits per second per screen. So if you've got multiple screens up, you maybe need slightly more than that. But for Media Central Cloud UX, yeah, about five megabits and up. It really depends on what you're doing. Um, of course, if you're just writing text and things like that, if you're actually playing the video, that's where you know the, the bandwidth requirements may seem um, a little bit more. Regis, do you want to add something that I saw you waving at me? Uh, that, that question always uh, interests me because, as you know, where I live, I have sometimes internet problems. So right now, I'm doing the zoom over my backup of my backup internet connection of a 4G modem. Uh, I have one bar of LTE right here. And not only I can do Zoom, but uh, I can definitely use Media Central and trigger all the ingests. And I've been typing text with you live during the demo or editing in Media Central, no problem, on one bar on LTE. So really, uh, again, the whole, whole uh, technology we're using, and especially our streaming stack for the video player is, is uh, extremely fine tuned to adapt to different type of bandwidth and network and latencies. Yep. Um, so another question from uh, Lisa, who's asking there, saying regarding Media Central Acquire, um, is there any limit on the number of ingest or stream channels um, or playback channels? So um, Acquire itself is for ingest as opposed to, to playback. We do have a solution for playback that we'll maybe talk about. In fact, Regis mentioned it um, a few minutes ago, which is uh, Media Central Command, which can control um, Media Central Stream for, for playback and file server and other servers um, as well. Um, an individual Media Central Stream server has four channels, but you can control multiple um, Media Central Stream, you can control multiple um, fast serve. Um, Regis, I'm not aware that there is a, a, a limit uh, to the number of devices that you can control. And we certainly have got customers who are, um, would be looking to control, you know, hundreds of channels um, as part um, of uh, of the ingest um, that they, they potentially do, particularly in sort of sports um, environments. Um, our existing, um, our previous technology, Media Central Capture, can control, I think it's 125 channels. Uh, so we're looking at scaling for those, those, kind of, those kind of numbers because we obviously base it on customer feedback for the kind of things that they're 
they're looking to looking to do. So, Rajis, I don't know if you know if there is a specific limit, but I'm certainly not aware of one. Thanks, Craig. Uh, hey, Lisa, thank you for your question. Um, so I honestly don't know from the top of my head, so I'll have to look it up. But what's very interesting is the way we developed um, Acquire is different from a previous generation product, which was a, a desktop application, which had a, a server running, Windows-based server, and then a, a desktop client. And uh, we were running, of course, an imitation what we could do. Acquire has been developed to be pods uh, running in Kubernetes. So those are Dockers. And uh, we do have customers that actually can also deploy multiple of those pods to, to manage ingest across multiple regions from one user interface. So uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you the limit at this point. And that's a great question. I need to check with my team, but uh, we haven't run into a limitation just yet. Uh, even for those customers who, for instance, for router control, we can run 12, 18, I think one of the customers running 18 pods of router control to control 18 routers in 18 different regions from the same user interface, uh, including all the video servers that are going beyond. And this is running pretty smoothly. So, so again, uh, that's one of the advantage to using cloud technology, even on-prem, like Docker's and Kubernetes, is we can really better manage elasticity and scaling of the different capabilities. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so that's great, Regis. Uh, Regis, at this point, um, we don't have any more um, open questions, so I'll go back and to, to share my screen again. Now, before the, I do that, um, I do want to say, if you want to get your cameras out, um, I am going to be sharing a couple of QR codes because we have actually got um, uh, an event coming up um, where we're going to be um, outlining some of the new developments in Media Composer, uh, and I'm going to be sharing a QR code with you uh, if you want to register for that event, which is happening um, next week. So I'll give you a few seconds uh, to uh, to uh, to get your cameras ready for for that. Um, but I'll just go ahead and share my screen again. So again, really just to summarise, you know what we what we've looked at today. Um, it's about efficiency and collaboration. Um, you know, I think one of the things that just to call out about, you know, Media Central Acquire is that, you know, I'm working from home, I'm connecting to um, a system that's work that's working somewhere else, I'm bringing in a stream that's coming from any location, um, and that then could be delivered to a production team that are working in a different location as well. So it really is about you know remote working. It is about remote collaboration. It is about bringing teams together in ways that you know weren't really possible um, before. Media Central Acquire just is adding on to the capabilities of Media Central Cloud UX. You know that ability to write a story in 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 uh, your newsroom system and that ability to edit. Um, in your newsroom system. You know, I, we looked at doing a news edit, including voiceover, but we can go up to four tracks of video, eight tracks of audio, you know, as part of the editing capabilities inside of Media Central um, Cloud UX. Media Central Collaborate, you know, that, that really story-centric tool. We focused here on news, but of course, Media Central Collaborate could be used for um, any production where there's a requirement to do planning, tracking, content sharing, you know, really anything. So it does have, you know, lots of, of capabilities there as well. And it's about creating content really for any platform. We know from our customers that, um, you know, it's not just about the broadcast show now. It is very much about using the system as efficiently as possible to then distribute the content and making maximizing the value um, of all of the different content uh, that you uh, that you have so i mentioned um about um media composer and so um next week um on uh, thursday next week so the 16th um our colleagues are going to be running a webinar where we're going to be going over all of the great features that were introduced um, in Media Composer, you know, through the course of uh, 2022. Um, like Media Central, Media Composer had a release um, uh, just about Christmas, New Year time in 2022.12. So that will obviously, you know, focus the new capabilities are there. So if you want to register, please feel free to, you know, scan the QR code that's, uh, that's on the screen now. Uh, that will take you to the registration link and you'll be able to register there uh, to either watch it live um, or to watch it on demand. In terms of live, of course, as you can see on the screen, it's going to be 10 Pacific, 1 Eastern, um, 6 o'clock um, in the UK, and of course, centered 7 o'clock um, in, central, in Central Europe. So please feel free to scan the QR code and to, to register for that. Um, and then... If you want to find out more about you know any of the the solutions that uh, that we've had today, then you know feel free to go to the Avid website. So you know there is the the web link. But again, if you scan the QR code, 
that will take you directly to that link. Um, and obviously on the Avid website, you can find more about Avid solutions, not just about you know, media production in the cloud, but for example, you know, Media Central for news, Media Central for sport um, uh, as well. Uh, and that will also you know, give you lots of information um, there. Um, so hopefully that's been uh, useful for you today. Thanks so much for taking the time uh, to join us. Um, and with that, I'll say goodbye and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.